looking in. So. Look at this lighting. Ooh. Oh, this is nice. I told well, I was, for, for once, we're not filming this, and I wonder if I'm just a silhouette. I was thinking the other day how nice it'll be when it's like light out when we record the beginning of these. It'll be a whole different look. June 21st. Okay, so X-Men Dark Phoenix. Here's the thing. A lot of people trashing this thing. But some people are not trashing it. Some people are saying that it's not bad. I've seen mix. Um, what we do know is that the production was an absolute mess. Right. Uh, yeah, we, we, know... all knew, we all knew that. I didn't know that. Um, <laughs> really bad sign. Really bad reshoots. They basically had to... They saw Captain Marvel okay. and decided that the ending was too close and so refilmed the whole last act so of the movie. So we're getting like a fan four stick type situation. E, I hope not. Reshoots. Michael Fassbender went out and said that he only did it because Simon Kinberg directed, um, which is weird because Simon Kinberg's never directed a movie before, Dang. ever. But he does know a lot about the X-Men. Uh, Jennifer Lawrence has never wanted to be there, but clearly doesn't want to be there now. I don't think anyone Since she's already dead there, and anyway. they gave that away in the trailers. That's another thing, very spoilery trailers. But the I biggest I thing... I, I, I think oh. I missed that trailer too. Oh. Wow, thanks. <laughs> it was the main trailer where she's like, well, don't come near me. I, I didn't interpret that as her. I was, dying. Oh, I was I so... I was I so well, maybe then, maybe she doesn't die, Jeremy. I was so... I mean, she might... <laughs> I'm so not hyped by this movie. Even if you are an X-Men fan, Disney is going to reboot the whole thing anyway. Yeah. So at this point, it's like, yeah. what's the point? Hopefully the, we can finally get a good shadow cat. The, I think the only thing that they could really do to make this worthwhile is if, you know, and it's sad because they're coming out right on the heels of Endgame, but that's really what they would have to do is make it a finale and say, look, this franchise has been well, going it on. But isn't this, it the this finale? Is, this is, they, they're saying this is the but end of the X-Men song. I don't think that's what they meant to do before right. they got uh, bought. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Being, being the last movie. And being the finale. Yeah, I thought that finale. was very weird that this is going to be the last movie. Right. Well, because Disney had not bought, bought Fox when they did it. The original plan for this trilogy was supposed to be that Matthew Vaughn wanted to do X-Men First Class. Then he wanted to do a movie in the middle that would introduce Cyclops, Wolverine, Storm, and Jean Grey as younger characters. And then X-Men Days of Future Past was supposed to happen where everybody would get together and that was supposed to be the last movie. And so you said, well, your best script is X-Men Days of Future Past, so we're just going to do that next. Which is like, well, then what were you going to do after that? And clearly they didn't know. You know, and that's how we wind up here. And it sucks because it's the last movie. None of the main characters are here, like the main actors that you want. And it's is, like... Is Nicholas Holt still? Nicholas yeah, Holt is Beast. Okay. James... Beast. Not James Marsden. I wish James Marsden was Nicholas Holt. James McAvoy James and James Michael Marsden. Fassbender. And James Marsden was R.A.P. Cyclops. Yeah. What are you doing? Just trying to sit... <laughs> what? What's the big deal? I'm sorry. <laughs> You call it Shud? Are you like a buddy cop? I didn't mean to interrupt you. I'm so <laughs> sorry. Jeez. Hey, can we just go see the stupid well, I just, fucking I just, movie? I just, uh, one last thing I want to say is um, I feel like based on what I do know from the trailers, this is going to be very similar to... I guess it was Days of Future. The one, the one where Mystique is like evil and she tries like she goes like rogue on her on her own and tries like kill people. That was Days of Future Past, yeah. where they go back to stop her yeah. from doing that. I feel like yes. broken down. This is gonna be almost the same right. thing. I would also like to um, interject my own point of view. Um, I do not think Sophie Turner is a good enough actress to lead an entire movie. I'm very concerned about that. I love her as like a yeah. person. I, I think, think she's, she's a hilarious. Great, she's a great person. But I think in these serious roles, she's just very flat. And I'll go. Um, and I think that they're saying. trying to. I think that they casted. I think that they cast her with the hopes that oh, this is going to release right after Game of Thrones ends. People are going to be fucking hyped up. They're going to want to go see it because she's in it. And. I don't think that that worked out for them well, either. Well, with the reshoots, <laughs> it was supposed to come out way before Game yeah, of Thrones end, ended, but they added a whole two years to production. Yeah. So it was even more of that because it would have been while Game of Thrones was still big, you know. Right. I think she's, as I, I've said to you before, I think she would be much better in more comedic roles because she is a funny person. Right. And, like, seeing the way she is when she's, like, you know, not being, you know, super serious know. Sansa, that pretty much just stands there and does nothing right. most of the time. I would say that none of the young X-Men, though, are characters that I really like, except for, like we said, I like... Nightcrawler. I like Nightcrawler. Well, 
yes, but I, I prefer Alan Cummings, though. Yeah, of course. But that's but... the thing. None of the young counterparts, except for James McAvoy and Michael Fassbender, even hold a candle to any of the older characters because we had so much development there. Mm -hmm. So then when you have, you like... three movies. Right. Too. When you have tiny Cyclops and tiny Jean Grey, it's like, I this think is the, the new, YA I think, adaption. I think the new Cyclops know? is, like, the biggest pussy in the world. And honestly, even James Morrison's Cyclops Jay, is kind of a pussy. They've but. never known what to do with that fucking character, they, which is... They, okay, they can, no, so we, we can have a whole right, other yes, so, whole other time to talk about x -Men. After the cock and lips now. Wait. No, <laughs> it's Dark Phoenix. I, oh, sorry, I'm, wrong movie. Jeremy? I'm wildly unexcited for this movie, and that's all I want to say. Me too, I don't even know what's going to happen. Same... <laughs> we just got out of X Men Dark Phoenix. X Women Dark X Phoenix. X yeah, Dark we'll get Phoenix. to that. X Women, yes. some men, Dark Phoenix. <laughs> it's just women not because they're X Men. Tonight. Right, so it's women, men. Transgenders. What? Because they're X Men. X -Men. Just... I was hoping. Okay. Because a lot of the X Men movies have not been received well, um, and really the only one that I've hated—not that I like like the ones that are not well received, like Last Stand is not good, mm -hmm. Apocalypse is not good. That's but terrible. But <laughs> there are also things about those movies that are redeeming. So and that I can watch any of those other X Men movies and have a pretty good time, except for X Men Origins Wolverine, which I can't fucking stand. I don't know. I, I really disliked Apo Apocalypse, but go on. I was really hoping that I would come out of this movie and say, "Hey, it's not the best thing, but I could watch it again." Um, the worst thing this movie does is that it's fucking boring. Yeah, go it, on. It carries this like really grim and depressing tone through the entire thing. That maybe if you had a prior investment to these actors playing these characters you could pull off. Uh, I don't have that though. You say that, I've seen every single one of these movies and I right. don't have that. Exactly. So, and I'm a fan, I'm an active fan of yeah. the X-Men and I don't care. There's that serious tone but they can't settle serious. on it because... I'm not saying serious, I am saying... Grim depressing nothing there's a moment where you're at a party scene and it's still not like we're still not happy if you want to do that and you can make that work good but then you have to forego all of the goofiness and all of the silliness that comes along with this property so it's not even your fault that it's goofy and silly but your job is to then embrace that because that's the source material is goofy right well that's what i was gonna say is like the problem with it is that up until this point, most of the movies, I'm not going to say all of them because there are some real duds in the X-Men franchise, but most of the movies have some sort of balance between humor and, yeah. like, seriousness. Like, there's some light moments. There, is light, there are light moments. There is, like, love interest. There is, you know, storytelling, like, actual storytelling going on. This movie just took, like, one, one thought... And just tried to make a whole movie out of it. Yeah. And it just seemed so incohesive. It is depressing. And, like, there's very little redeeming qualities to that yeah. depressing, like, you even, know? Like, even the way they ended it, it was supposed to be, like, on a happy note. But, like, it all felt so hollow. Yeah. yeah. And, like, unwarranted. And you just, like, don't give a shit about these yeah. these characters, really like, don't. at all. Right. I really feel like the ending wasn't even a happy... Like, I, I felt the movie so trying to lead to the fact that there is some happiness in this ending but the way that it is doing everything I'm like nope this is still as depressing as the entire movie it sucks because like a lot of the other movies there are scenes that I could look at and say yes that really works but in this one they're so few and far between and as soon as they get the groove going and they're you know in it doing things that I like it's like somebody hits a break and they go, no, no, more shit. Like, I liked the beginning of the movie when they go into space, they save the astronauts, everybody's using their powers and working together and blah, blah, blah. Obviously, I understand the whole movie can't be like that. But, mm -hmm. I mean, I wish I would have gotten more than five minutes of it before we decided to just fuck everything up. Here's the thing. You say it can't be like that the whole time, but there is... There's no reason for that. The movie well, is no called... Conflict. There needs to be conflict in a movie. Right, but your tone can still be 
oh, they're all working together and they're going on this mission and they're all working off of each other. That's what X-Men is. So when they were doing that at the beginning and it you're worked. seeing like, how it... it working. Right. The missions are working. Everybody's using their powers yeah. as a team. And you're also seeing how society is responding to the X-Men. That's the comic. That's it. That's the story. So when you are doing that and you show me that you can... When you stop 10 minutes in, it's like, oh, so you're just not trying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. my, my One of my biggest issues with this movie is just, it's, not only is it incredibly predictable, but, like, it literally takes every cliche. Especially every, in the writing. Yeah, like every in the boring, actual, like, every boring, predictable dialogue. Like, I'm sitting yeah. there and I'm just like, oh, I've seen this before. I've seen yeah. this before. I've seen this before. Oh, let me guess. She's going to say this. This is what's going to happen. And, like, the whole movie. It's not even like it's just a little bit. It's the whole goddamn movie where you're just like, I know exactly what's going to happen. Right. And it doesn't help that not only have you seen it in a shit ton of other movies that are not X-Men movies. And it's not movies, even done well. It's done... I was thinking we were going to get something different than The Last Stand. This is the fucking it last really stand. Is. It really is. But extended, is. and if you're and worse, right? If you're gonna revisit <laughs> a movie that wasn't good to begin with, you have to build on it a little yeah, bit. Yeah, and what makes it worse is that the person who wrote and directed it also wrote for Last Stand, so he got another shot to basically redo it. Right, Simon Kimberg. And he did the exact same goddamn thing. Well, and there's my other thing is that Simon Kimberg has not only never directed a movie. He's never directed anything. He's never directed TV. He's never directed commercials. He's never directed short films. Yeah. So how he... Just because he's a guy that knows a lot about the X-Men. Yeah. He somehow stumbles into being the director of this movie. Yeah. And it's... In all fairness, it is a good first film. If this was your first time putting something on a camera, it is a good I first thought, film. I thought a lot of the shots, at least for me, like... I thought they were also very predictable shots. Right. Like, like when you see... Like a student filmmaker yeah, would do. like when you see Magneto learns about Raven. Oh, close up to his face. Waiting for the tear. And we get the tear. Okay. Right. Like, <laughs> Which is not the quality... You know, good yeah. first film is not the quality that you want last X-Men film. The end, right? Yeah, for the end yeah. of yeah. X-Men. And the, the, the issue here also is, as we were saying in the prior two, which, you know, obviously you and I were the only ones that knew, but, I mean, they put major, major spoilers. plot points and spoilers in the, in the trailers. Yeah. I mean, I know that you guys said that you didn't know that, that Raven died, but I mean, it was literally in the trailer. All these things that were like major, major things happening in the movie all in the trailer. were all in the trailer. The only thing that I didn't see coming, and I only recognized once you had said it, was the fact that they were going to be aliens. But again, there was like no explanation for aliens, aliens. whatsoever. <laughs> and they really aliens. show up like Indiana Jones 4, like fucking blender CG effects. It's just, yeah, it's out of nowhere. I mean, I just want to say a quick shout out uh, to Addo Isendo. He's one of the, he's the black guy. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's in Altered Carbon. And he had a pretty small role in Altered Carbon, somewhat small role. And he did really great in that. So it's actually nice to see him getting larger roles, but... It's just unfortunate if you have a good actor. Like, even the aliens, it almost seems like the writers just didn't feel no, like doing do their them. job yeah. that day because and it then, was... And like, the thing is, like, they, they just, like, couldn't decide, like, what the alien's purpose was. Like, it just... They barely just even didn't revealed, they didn't like, have a purpose. They, they just wanted the ability. That's right. That's all it was. <laughs> but then my bigger issue even is that you're sitting down and you go, Hey, uh, I gotta put aliens in the movie. How are we gonna make that work when I have a cast of people that don't want to do shit? Yeah. And then I have a team of effects artists that don't want to do shit. Well, I guess they're gonna look like normal people and their thing will just be that they don't have any expression. Yeah. Which I get is what the script must say the character is. But then that's a fault of whoever put that script together because that's boring as shit. Yeah. Speaking yeah. of actors not wanting to do anything, I'd love to know why Quicksilver was just not thrown in this to the movie. side. Yeah. yeah. Why they just they chose to not do anything. Quicksilver. I like know. That. I feel like they never really knew what to do well, with Evan Peters as Quicksilver, like in any of the movies. In Days of Future Past, I think they use him great. Yeah, and then because that was. Because he would have stolen the show. It. If he had been in it, it would have been yeah. the Quicksilver show. If they did 
if they did let him use his abilities, he would always be the one, like, to fix everything. Right. It's just stupid. And I understand that it's like, you don't want to make him too OP, so, like, you can't have him just yeah. fixing everything. Yeah. But then it's like, he's just then not in the movie. It's he, like, he had, like, he had, like five lines well, in the movie. When he exactly. showed up basically at the basically Captain end. Marvel in the end game. Like, well, he shows up at the end, and he tells that kid, like, ah, oh, stop running, haha. But it's like, I seriously forgot that you were in the movie. Right. Yeah. Apocalypse, I think they really didn't know what to do, so they tried to do the same thing as mm. Days of Future Past. Yeah. I get it, it didn't work, whatever. And now in this one, their response is, no, we're not gonna give him his sequence, but then we're just gonna keep him as a background character. Which, like, you know how to write all the other characters. Yeah. Just give him a reasonable part in the movie. Yeah. Don't stop it for him. I also yeah. feel like the Dark Phoenix storyline shouldn't just be one movie. I agree with that. Like, I think if, had they done a movie already and then they added in the whole alien thing and made that its own movie, I feel like that could have Well, been especially so much in this, in this plot, in this, like, world that they've created on. with it, it definitely could have been a two, two part movie yeah. in that she could have developed the Phoenix powers first and foremost. Right. And, she and then. To control it. And then and bid Dark Phoenix. Phoenix. And then you might have been able to... Right. Then you might have been able to, at some point in time, get her to be Light Phoenix. But even if you wanted to end it the same way that, they, that you ended this one, that would have been fine had we gotten a movie beforehand saying, hey, this is how this all came like to be. Even that. Yeah. What if you just gave me a movie where Jean Grey is a character? Because we haven't right. had that since 2000. So when you need so many parts of the movie to be her relationship with this person and her relationship with this person... Last Stand works better because they she had a good relationship with Hugh Jackman. They set up a relationship, but it is not in the movie. If she had a relationship with Xavier where these things would have mattered that he did that to her, yeah. then that's something. But she doesn't have a relationship with him. She doesn't have any relationship with Scott, which is a big part yeah, of the movie. Or, no or, with, or with Raven, either. And that's Raven, like supposed to be the whole big thing. There was no love. glue in between <laughs> right. all of these pieces of things happening right they were just happening and then floating off into space mm -hmm. you're missing you're not only missing you know plot points that would thread that together but i would argue some of the other x-men movies have that same problem mm -hmm. but what they do have is a good mastery of who their characters are right yeah. and this doesn't have that i would point to xavier as my number one issue with this movie yeah. days of future past first class and Apocalypse to some extent, you're seeing him struggle with getting a handle on his shit. And the resolution to all three of those movies is, hey, I have a handle on my shit now. Yeah. I'm going to try to be Patrick Stewart. So when the fuck are you going to be Patrick Stewart? Because it know. hasn't happened yet. Right. And so why at the beginning of every movie are we going back to square one with this guy? It's like none of that means anything when you set him up to be this in the final movie in the whole series. He still this, doesn't have a handle on his shit. He's got the same issues as he yeah, did in I mean, the first one, but it's worse yeah. now. And you brought it up. A clearly good, a fucking alcoholic. And too. you brought. Up oh, like he never didn't have a drink. Yeah. yeah, and you brought up a good point too that when Raven dies, he literally sits there and watches it happen. He like, didn't give he a did shit. He did not do anything. It just didn't make any sense to me. Like it just was so out there in terms of what we were supposed to be like feeling. Well, particularly since in this version, you know, the two characters that have had the most to do with Mystique are Magneto and Xavier. And Hank and her had like a thing in the first one. Yeah. But they I, don't have scenes together in Days of Future I know, Past. I know. I completely forgot about that. And I honestly, this whole movie, I really didn't like really like, You don't feel connect it. that. I yeah. only. And like her last words are her telling him that she loves him. Yeah. Like, I was like, like where, did, where is this coming from? Like, they hook up briefly in the in first class, but then they try to make it like that brother-sister relationship. And that works just fine. But it's nowhere near the same level of relationship that she should have had with Xavier or with Magneto, which is set up from the with first Xavier, ever movie. who she grew up with. Right. The whole conflict that he was having with Jean Grey this whole movie just reminded me of the whole conflict that he had with Raven. And I don't remember which one it was. Days of Future Past. Days of Future Past. Then you have to take loose ends from the series that are just now in there because why? Like, the whole thing with Quicksilver, and this was a problem I had with Apocalypse, that Quicksilver knows Magneto is his dad. 
is that ever mentioned in this movie? Uh, he is. I ever. didn't even know that. Uh, yeah, it, it is uh, in this movie. In, no, in this one. No, not because in this movie. that's the whole his whole arc in Apocalypse is yeah. Magneto's my dad. I gotta <laughs> tell him, and then at the end he has this perfect opportunity to tell Magneto like, "Hey, you're my dad. That's why I'm, I'm helping you. You're not alone," which is Magneto's <laughs> whole arc. In that movie. Well, they probably didn't have enough time but, or, or well, space to resolve that. That's what I'm movie. saying. You want to add another goddamn plot line to this movie? But I don't. <laughs> I think you should have wrapped it up in Apocalypse, but they saved it specifically yeah. to do it in a sequel. And you can tell because they have the scene. Mm. And you're watching it thinking, yeah, that'll come back. Never. No. It never will. Yeah, and it sucks too because Magneto is actually really great in this movie, I thought. I, I think he was probably the best part of the movie. And wasted. Michael no Fassbender, reason for him to be there. Michael Fassbender was giving it 110% in this movie. No, he always does. He's a pro. Yeah. I love when he takes his little pet train for a walk. Yeah. They do this space mission where they go to space and they save some astronauts. And. Yeah, a normal <clears throat> day at the office. Yeah, whatever. So then they come back and. Mystique is talking to Xavier and she's like she's like, you know, the women do a lot of saving of men around here. You should really rename it to the ex women. And I'm like, actually, I don't know if you were at the same mission that I just watched, because the guys did do most of the work there. Yeah, pretty much Nightcrawler. And Quicksilver. Nightcrawler and Quicksilver did ninety percent of the work. So I don't know. But hey, what storm, point you're trying storm to make? Froze if you stuff. wanted to, yeah, which is a impossibility because there's no weather in space. If you wanted to say that bad line, you could have at least had Mystique do more things than sit on the plane and do nothing. Also, Xavier's in a wheelchair and didn't have powers that would have helped that much. Yeah, and like, she, she what was do they pissed that he didn't do? do a lot. Not to I'm mention like, okay, like well. When do you ever have? I, I said. What is mind control or listening to the mind of somebody going to going do. to help you in space? And I said I was exactly. like, and like he's he's the guy, he's the one that started all this. When do you ever see the owner of a? Sports the general team? doesn't go on the beach exactly. at D-Day. You don't you don't see the 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 top executive on the front lines of the battle. It's inconsistent with Xavier's character but it makes sense to be pissed at him for how he's acting because like at the very beginning they go hey we don't have a rocket ship we have like a an airplane and he's like yeah an airplane they can go like, to space they were like we can't do this do and it. then raven and was like goes, oh no we can do it well they say xavier we can't do this and he goes well sorry i can't the, you gotta, I mean, the you gotta go i'm the president sorry said i like i don't know what you want me to do <laughs> the airplane went to space the concept of Dark Phoenix, the issue is that the, our friend is now so powerful that we can't handle her. We gotta take care of it. She's more powerful than any of us. And yet, anytime that they need to confront her, there's no, like, strategy to it, which, again, it's, it's the X-Men. It's supposed to be strategy and how the team works. But it's Magneto knows how powerful she is. They have a face-off where her powers overpower his already. Right. And he has the opportunity to, you know, sneak up behind her and just get a rail in her head, you know. But instead he walks up and goes, hey, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to murder you. I'm going like, to what did close you the think? door and assume it all went to plan. What? <laughs> One thing that Last Stand does well is that everything she does has a consequence. Mm -hmm. You know, it's once she kills, spoiler, but the movie's been out since 2006. Once she kills Xavier in that movie, it's not, oh, we need to bring her back here and have her hang out with us. It's, oh, we gotta take care of this. I'm yeah. sorry, but this is what has to happen. Which is what Storm said, and that was like the only time it was really mentioned was, they were like, you wanna believe that she's still in there, but she's right. not. And that's what makes Dark and Phoenix an that. interesting <laughs> story is that they go after her like yeah. that. So now for the goal to be, yeah, we wanna bring her back home so that she can tell us about that cool murder. Yeah. And then name the school after her. Oh my god, that was some bullshit. And like, Ra yeah. so Raven died for nothing. <laughs> she doesn't even get a mention, like featuring Raven. <laughs> her reward is that she doesn't have to be in this fucking franchise anymore. Yeah. And I guess the rest of them don't either. Right yeah, I just yeah. want to. This doesn't have to go into it. I just want to literally say this to you guys because there's like some speculation of what's going to happen in the MCU and who the new baddie's going to be. And some people have speculated. Oh, don't do Dark Phoenix again. Please. Well, no, people have speculated that it's going to be the new Scarlet Witch storyline where she goes like rogue. 
Honestly, if they do that, then we're basically just getting the same fucking movie. Right I would again. love to see Scarlet Witch I think link we... up with the X-Men. Very quickly, um, one thing that does make this worth any... It, it save this thing from an F, to be honest. That train scene at the end of this movie... Right. Yeah. Oh my god. I think we can all agree to that. Where, where was that, this whole franchise? Because... You know, for all the other movies, it's Wolverine does the heavy lifting and the other X-Men are there, you know? Yeah. We have never had all the X-Men working together like that, using their powers the right way, except Days of Future Past. They kind of did it. Kind of, yeah. But this was... This is everything that I... That sequence is everything that I want an X-Men action sequence to be. I don't know why it took so long and then wound up in this shit bag of a movie. And clearly was not originally meant to be in the movie because this is a reshoot. It is a reshoot yeah. and it's the best yeah. thing in the movie. Yeah. But oh man, that is, I I mean, I will get the movie at some point when it's like in the dollar bin just to watch that. I don't know, all I know is. I'm curious if how similar it was to Captain Marvel. I guess maybe they took them on a spaceship. Yeah, she then, probably was like destroying spaceships the same way. And spaceship and, thing yeah. because instead to be of fair, like train thing. No, she's right turning people to dust like right like Thanos actually it reminded me a little bit more of Jasmine from Aladdin <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> uh, well we'll see because um at the beginning of the movie it was a C but it the other X-Men movies that I kind of are okay am okay with are C's mm -hmm. so then I thought then it got really bad and I was like oh it's an F but that train scene really brought it up and I'm actually going to give the movie a straight D just the just the tip of the D. It's a lowercase D. Just the tip. Just the tip. Um, you have to put a lowercase D. It's not a good movie. Like most of the other X Men movies, there are some redeeming qualities, but this is the least that I've ever seen them. And it was, despite the word of mouth, it was still a big disappointment for me, and I had very low expectations. Um, I I am also gonna give it a D. I really feel like. I really feel the same way about it coming out as I exactly expected I would going in. I'm ready to not really think about this going forward. I'm ready to just move on from these X-Men From movies. this. Let's <laughs> move on. Let's close the book. And So, oh, yeah. for me, I have never walked out of a movie theater, but this movie was really testing my strength with it. And it started off okay, and then it was honestly F minus territory for almost the entire movie. From God on damn! Out. It was I've I could not tell you the time I've ever thought a movie was this bad. But then the train scene kind of saved it, so I'm just just above an F, which is going to be a D minus. That train scene is the only salvageable thing from this movie, I think. Yeah. And I badass, I came though. really close to walking out because I was just so tuned out, and I was so bored. And I was just so tired of knowing everything that they were going to say before they said it. And knowing what was going to happen. It was so long, too. And it really wasn't. It was under two hours. Which was like, it yeah, really? Yeah, 153. Oh, my yeah. God. I'm, like, going back and forth between giving it, like, a D or D+. Plus, but I guess I'll say D+. Plus because I've definitely seen movies that I couldn't stand more than this one mm -hmm. i definitely stuck it through with this one and at least wanted to see how they ended it you know like see what they were gonna do since it was the last one you know the finale for this this group i suppose like th like the other guy said like there were some some things that were okay like that that train scene at the end was really really good and i really liked that so that's why i'm like leaning more towards like the d plus but then there were things like Marco was saying, like just so much predictability in the plot, predictability in the the um, writing, like just the the dialogue, and it just, you know, things like that. When you start seeing a movie, and it's like I could have written this movie, and I actually think I could have written it better. Written it in fifth grade. Yeah, <laughs> you know, then you're just like, uh, why did I waste my time? I didn't really like hate this. I just like Jeremy said, I'm just like ready to just like not think about it anymore. Which is so sad. And just final thought on it, but. X-Men as the movie franchise more than Spider-Man and more than anything that Marvel has done was one of the things that made it possible for us to have superhero movies like we have yeah. is that 2000s X-Men and they had a really good run you know they, they've done eight fucking movies now and it's like of all kinds 
that have been very well received and then some not so much but it just sucks that this last one is going to be the taste left in people's mouths we're not going to remember those other ones because yeah. it's now we're at the end we've had two stinkers and not to mention they pretty much bailed on the originals they were like right. those don't exist and days so. of future past <laughs> would have been such a nice finale for everything if we had just yeah. cut it off that was like the last good one in my opinion yeah. And that I think that movie's as good as any any Avengers movie. To be honest with you, I I don't know. It's just very unfortunate that this is what happened to a franchise that was really great and that I really truly love and enjoy. And like in my opinion, again, just like a final note, like I love love the Deadpool movies, and like for this to be like in the same universe no. I think like, as those movies universe. like same direct correlated the universe of the X-Men in Deadpool No I know I know but that's what I'm saying like yeah. to be in the same universe and to have it be that bad and I I mean Deadpool De the Deadpool movies are like some of my favorite movies like ever and to have it just like it just doesn't make sense to me like how there's just so much more care and well, like, I mean, and you could, it, yeah. we could Put go there it. even with you know the Brian Singer trilogy. So much care in yeah. what he did, you know. And Logan, and think about Logan, how emotional Logan was. Not just Logan, Logan but I know there were a couple stinkers. Yeah. But the Wolverine movies, you can't sit there and go, yeah, nobody cared about this because right. even though it took them three times to get it right, they did land it. It came out great at the end. We got one of the best comic book movies of all time, in my fucking opinion. But with Logan, with Logan, yeah. You know, Hugh Jackman really, really cared about this thing, you right. know? Patrick Stewart really cared. Ryan Reynolds really right. gave a shit. Right. Brian Singer, Matthew Vaughn, all these people, very talented people. Mm -hmm. And now this guy's going to come in here and shit all over that. Right. Yeah. It's like you're taking, like, blockbuster, like, fucking uh -huh. high-quality content and pairing it with a made-for-TV movie. At, like a student film. Right. Yeah. Was such a We're big, done here. This has been 40 minutes. Thank you for watching Ride Home Reviews. We're done now. Good night. Bye. Bye.